Okay, welcome back. In this third video, we'll look at setting up the InDesign document for the first time. So when you launch InDesign, you might come to a screen that looks something like this. Uh, if you don't have this, you just go to File and choose New. New document will bring you back to this place. Now, if you click on Create New, uh, this is where it assumes again that you know what type of document you want, how many pages, what size and all that. And you have these presets at the top. So um, basically, you've got all the sizes here. I Look, don't, don't worry about the templates for now. Uh, but yeah, if you click on Print, and then you'll see all the different sizes. You might decide that your uh, portfolio is going to be A5 size. And uh, if you change the measurement over here to millimeters, it will reflect the size of A5 over here. Now, you can, of, of course, ignore this and just type in whatever size you want over here and whatever orientation. So you can make up your own size. Now, let's look at this area here. Uh, so the size is important, so make sure you know what size document you want. I'm going to create an A5 size document. Um, and there will be tall pages, but I want the pages on my screen to be facing each other. So left and right pages uh, to create a spread will be facing each other. Now, the number of pages, again, it's up to you. I'll just let you know that if you are going to print your PDF portfolio, uh, printers will charge you less if the pages are made up in multiples of eight. So if you ever wondered why a children's book is 32 pages, it's because they print on large sheets that are guillotined into multiples of eight. And it's more economical for you to print uh, any booklet that is made up on, of a number of pages that is divisible by the number eight. So eight, 16, 32, and so on. Uh, but again, it's up to you what you type up here. I might just type in 12, um, just to begin with, 12 pages. And uh, now the columns, that is where you lay your text. I might just leave that as one column for now. You can have multiple columns like a magazine. And then we come to margins, and I might leave that alone as well, because I can always change this later on. And then bleed and slug. Well, ignore slug. You don't need to worry about that. That's something that printers worry about. But the bleed is if you want a photograph to um, be to bleed off the edge of the paper. In other words, when it's guillotined at the printers, it's a nice crisp, sharp edge, and you can't see any white around the edge. Um, then you type in a bleed, and we'll talk about that as we start to place the images onto the page. Typically, three mils is enough for a bleed, and you can see because I've got this link uh, item on. It does all the uh, sides of my booklet at the same time. All right, so that's the setup. Let's click on Create and see what we end up with. All right, so you can see this is page number one, and it tells me down the bottom here that this is page one. In fact, this will tell me where all the pages live. It's a nice little pop-up menu. We're going to talk about our A Masters as well, or Master Pages. So let me scroll and show you what a double page looks like. So this is page two, this is page three, and then four and five, six and seven, eight and nine, 10, 11, and the last page is 12. Now the first and the last page has to be single. Okay, and this is really important when you're printing. So that's why the number of pages is important. If you type in 13, it, you're gonna end up with a, a double page as the end, and no single end page. So just make sure that the numbering of pages is an even number um, to get those two singles at the front and the back. All right, now let's talk about these cutted lines. So I'll just zoom in. Now, the edge of the paper is here, this black line here. This purple line denotes the margin area. That's where if you were typing lots of columns of text, they would sit within the margin area. And then this red line is the bleed area. So uh, here's an example of how bleed works. I'm just going to go and place an image from my portfolio. Let me just pick on this one here. This will do. Uh, what's this one? That one is, oh, yep, that's a good one. So if I then place that, I get this little thumbnail with my cursor, and it's saying, where do you want to plonk it, Con? And I'll just click once here, and InDesign will plonk it onto the page wherever I clicked. And you can see it's much bigger than the page. But just to demonstrate bleed, I'm just going to move it to the area outside of this black line. And then 
To preview what the page will look like when it was printed, I'll just tap on the W key on my keyboard. So you can see by tapping on the W, you have now got a preview of what it would look like if it was guillotined at the printers. You only see this much. So the bleed area is really this area outside here. And of course, you don't want, you don't want the printer to do that. So that's why that's important. Now we'll come back to importing images in a minute uh, in the next video. But for now, if I tap on the W key, it comes back to the normal view where you can see all these uh, guidelines. Now the purple line, you can adjust that as you want. Uh, I'll just show you, if I, if I now, let me click on page one and I'll adjust this purple margin. And then I'll, I'll tell you about using master pages. So if I now go to layout and choose margins, I can tell in design that I want to adjust the margin and see how the preview button is on. So watch what happens when I start adjusting. Oh, let me link, let me link all these numbers. So as I adjust, they all shrink. You can see it's shrinking live. Okay, now you can unlink and you can, you can adjust these individually. So you can have that one uh, at, you know, let's go to 50. You can have this one at uh, 25. The bottom one can be 35 and then the outside one can be, um, you can make that 50 as well. And as you do this, it, the preview shows you what the column will look like. So this is a single column of text. And then when you click OK, there it is. However, if you go now to the other pages, you'll notice that uh, they remain the same. Nothing's changed. And that's because InDesign will do um, a margin change on the page that you are currently selected, uh, the, the page that you're currently viewing. And to view a page, to activate a page in view, you have to click it once with your mouse. I know it's hard to remember, but let's say I want to do something with this page here, this margin. I have to actually tell InDesign that it's this page that I want to change the margins to. So I click once in the white area. Then I go to margins. I'll do this really quickly. And then uh, I'll just do that as well. And watch what happens. So as I adjust the margins, if I click OK, this page has been left untouched and it knows only to do this page. So the important thing to remember when you're creating a new document is that you click the page once to tell InDesign I'm now working on these two pages. Now lastly, if you want to affect the margins for all the pages, if you want to adjust the margins the same on all the pages, you have to go to something called the master page. And in this case, it's called a master. And this is where you make the changes. So once again, if I go to layout and margins, whatever I do here should now appear on all the pages. So I'm just going to do that. Uh, enable layout adjustment. All right, tick that on and then click OK. And when I go now back to my document, they should all follow suit. They should all be the same. Notice that. So if you want to affect the whole document, you do the changes in the master page. Now, just to show you something else about the master page, whatever I place on the master page will be reflected on every page in the document. So for instance, if I want to place my black logo, and I'll just click OK, there's my little thumbnail. I'll click over here. Now it's quite big, and I have to reduce it. Now in InDesign, to reduce something, you have to hold the command key and the shift key together and then press and drag. If you don't hold the command key, if you just hold the shift key, it crops the image, which you don't want. So remember that command or control on your keyboard with the shift key, press and drag, and that will resize the logo. So if I want to then place it in the top left hand corner, uh, let me just place it over here. That's on the master page now. When I go back to page one, it appears there, and then it appears on the right-hand page of every other page. So that's using the master page, and you may want to do that sparingly, because of course, um, you may not want the logo sitting there on the cover page. All right, that's enough for now, and uh, we'll meet you in the next video.